Thanks, yes, Mr. Greg Dickerson. How you doing, sir? Doing great, Michael. How about you? I'm doing great, man. So one of the things I wanted to do today is kind of merge a couple of questions to go together, and that is, what do you what do you think of when you hear all these people talking about bubbles, biggest ever crisis, crash, this, that, the other thing, and then you kind of come in and go, hey, lots of people are trying to get started now, and uh, you know, you kind of add on to that. Can anyone get rich? You know, that's that's a lot in that statement. Um, you know, where do you want to go in there? So let's put it in the context of the United States. So, sure. you know, there are places in the country and in the world, you know, in countries in the world right now where, you know, they are suppressed and it's it's very difficult, if not impossible for those individuals mm -hmm. in certain areas right now. Fair. So let's just take the United States, the land of opportunity where everybody has an equal opportunity that's willing to educate themselves and put in the work to become whatever it is their version of the American dream is. Mm -hmm. uh, whether that's wealthy, rich, property, absolutely yes. In this country, everybody, anybody and everybody can do it. Awesome. Um, and we've got example after example, you know, of that, um, you know, so there's no doubt. The real question is, we are in, you know, the greatest bubble, as Michael Burry says, the greatest bubble of all time in all things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he's been calling for crashes and stuff. But at the same time, he said, I've been through several bubbles in my life and I am not shorting cryptocurrencies or certain yeah. things right now. And he's actually- He closed um, his short on Tesla. He closed his short on Tesla and, you know, Elon Musk got the, got the best out of that deal. I think yeah, he waited and so. then he sold his stock afterwards. <laughs> yeah, after he closed it. Yeah, exactly. So ah. Burry's missed that a little bit, you know, so, um, you know, but yeah, we're in a huge mega bubble, you know, uh, Jerome Powell was retained his position. I saw that. Um, you know, so obviously they realize you can't make a change there because yeah. that would have brought it all tumbling down. Yeah. Um, and as long as you got the fed behind everything and Powell in there, uh, you know, with the mindset that's there right now, you know, this is going to continue. You can't fight the Fed. You know, it's it's a bull market. You don't short a bull market, you know, uh, in any any asset class. Now, again, there are certain things that are keeping it up and it is very difficult because this is the top. And I get that question all the time. Should I buy real estate at the top right now? Prices are at all time highs. Well, you know, rates are at all time lows. So what are your goals? Uh, you know, if you're looking purely speculation and appreciation, you have to be very in tune to what's going on in the market. If you're buying cash flow, if it cash flows, you can pay whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, no. Cap no. rates don't matter. You know, the only thing matters is dollars in, dollars out. Does it cash flow? Um, you know, after debt service. You know, yeah. you need to have yeah. something all, left all over. in. Yeah, all in. No, no fake, no fake accounting here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to have some money left over, so you have reserves and capex and you know things like yeah. that. When it comes to stocks and things like that, you know, the question is: Is there significant upside for here if you're getting into stocks and you know, cryptos and financial, other financial assets and, and commodities, bonds, things like that. Um, you know, we're at record highs in a lot of these areas as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be careful there because, you know, we've seen straight up in all markets here since, you know, really a, forever, you know, since mm -hmm. of existence, but they all have their peaks and valleys and good times mm -hmm. and bad times and bull markets and bear markets and that none of them ever last. They always go up, they always come down, they go up. The question is, is there significant upside from here like we've seen over the last 10 years? And at some point, it, you would think, and I don't know, I mean, this is above my pay grade, and I think some of the brightest minds in the world, economists, you know, financial analysts, investors, billionaires, nobody knows how long we can continue on this path of quantitative easing mm -hmm. and, you know, close to zero and almost negative interest rates. Nobody seems to know, does that ever have to stop? And as long as that doesn't stop, yes, we can still grow exponentially. And, you know, people are, you know, we're, we're setting records and, you know, all of the financial markets every day, we're setting records in crypto every day, uh, you know, but at some point, if that uh, policy changes, it's going to delever and it's all going to come, you know, crumbling down back to levels and then you'll be on the way up again. Mm -hmm. So you just have to understand what you're getting into, why prices are where they are, mm -hmm. where the growth is going to come from and how, and you need to understand the top. And I say it all, all the time. The most important thing to know is the top. The bottom doesn't matter. You need to understand where the top is. And is it, is it short term mm -hmm. or is it global macro? And those yeah. are the things you really need to be in tune with. Yeah, there was something I heard the other day, the Tina trade. I'm like, what the hell is the Tina trade? It's the um, there is no alternative is the Tina trade. Basically saying bond, bonds are negative. Can't touch those. Uh, you know, it, it's. The money's got to go somewhere. So few people are comfortable sitting on cash right now, right? They've got to be fully invested. The retail traders fully invested. And then I go back to Warren Buffett 
149 billion sitting on the side, Jamie Dimon, a trillion dollars in cash. There are some of the biggest, baddest investors out there that are like, nope, I'll be in cash. It, it, uh, it's so well, uncomfortable. You know, they don't have to. So you mm-hmm. got to understand where the narrative of, of the Tina trade is coming from. It's mm-hmm. coming from the institutional world that has to provide a return. It's coming from mm-hmm. uh, pension funds, hedge funds, insurance funds, annuities. Mm-hmm. It's coming from those companies that have to generate a 7% yield mm-hmm. in order to continue to make the payments out that they're making. So that's where that narrative is coming from. And it's risk on because you can't get yield anywhere else. Oh, yeah. And they're starting to look more, a lot of pension funds and stuff, they're having to look for more alternative assets like private equity, um, commercial paper, you know, more riskier assets. Some of them are looking at crypto. None of them have made a big move. And if they Mm -hmm. do, it's going to be 1%. But if you're 500 billion, you know, 1% is a pretty good little number Mm -hmm. for average people. But for that firm and fund, you know, it's really not. So uh, it's becoming a big problem worldwide for retirement funds yeah, um, and for insurance funds and things like that that have to earn yield. That's where that narrative's coming from. You know, mm-hmm. your average investor, trader, uh, you know, public companies, you know, they have to make returns. Buffett needs to make returns. He doesn't care, man. I mean, he's about, he's almost done. You know, he's going to yeah. be- is he 90 now? 89 something? I think. He's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, exactly. you know, his, his days are numbered and, you know, so is Charlie Munger, but the firm needs to continue and they have to generate a return sure. for their investors. Uh, but they can just buy their own stock back and, you know, things like that. So they, you yeah. know, and they have to, they have to move big, big, big amounts of money. So it's very difficult for them, but. Yeah. Warren Buffett's going whale hunting as he calls it. He, you know, it's pretty, yeah. A little $1 billion deal doesn't really help Warren Buffett. He's, he's going for 10, 15, 20, $50 billion. Like when he bought a railroad the last time. So yeah, the, the other thing is you brought up right out of the gate is if it cash flows, right. For me, one rental at a time, right. Residential guy. Uh, today, if it if it cash flows like real cash flow, not like some fake, you know, after depreciation or whatever cash flow, but like real cash flow, positive yield, uh, and you're getting ch- cheap thirty year debt, that means something. There's value in the debt because at least I believe that r- rates are artificially low, pushed low by the Fed. I think they will be low through most, if not all, next year. But at some point, rates go up. And that will have an impact. But again, look at payments, look at rent, right? Do the math, folks, because sometimes the answer is, you know, buy now, lock in debt and, you know, hold it for 30 years. Yeah, rents rents have gone up exponentially in the last couple of years. That's one of the biggest inflation, you know, indicators and, and impact out there that, that nobody is calculating at a federal yeah, it's level. 30%, you know, the it's level. 30% of CPI. And the last time the CPI number was hit, it, it showed 2.4% or something. I was like, what are you guys calculating? Rents up 20%. What are you doing? So kind Yeah, of yeah, they have no well, I don't want to say they have no clue. I think they do know, but there's really nothing they can do about it. They're 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 pinned. They can't do anything about it. So what do you what do you do? Do you let inflation run wild because, you know, how punitive is that compared to a complete financial meltdown? Yeah. So right now, a little bit of extra inflation is less punitive than a complete financial meltdown because if interest rates all of a sudden shoot up, you know, everybody's debt goes up, everybody's credit cards go up, um, you know, everything, you know, everything is just a catastrophe. And if, you know, liquidity dries up out there and we, we um, you know, have an event like we had 08, 09, which was you couldn't borrow money, interest rates were through the roof, mm-hmm. you know, um, that really puts an impact on housing. Housing is driving a big part of the economy right now through construction, things like that. Same mm-hmm. thing in 08, 09, people underestimated the impact that housing, that a housing yeah, lots construction of labor. boom, yeah. it's all, it's all assets now. It's commercial and residential construction boom everywhere. I mean, there's cranes in the air mm-hmm. in cities all across the country. Mm-hmm. You know, people underestimated in 08, 09, the impact that the construction industry had on the economy. And when that shut down, boom, you know, I mean, it was lights out, you know, you're not, I mean, there's just, it just reverberates around like a butterfly effect. And now the low interest rates are the, the construction and housing and the bond purchase and you know monetative easing is the housing crisis that we had back then the equivalent there's mm-hmm. that much liquidity and leverage in the system that if it stops it all comes crumbling down so what's worse inflation or that well here so let's actually have that conversation so let's say it's let's say for whatever reason inflation really is 6.2 percent it, it we're just going to magically say it is do you think inflation goes higher from here and if it does go higher, where do you think it peaks? I, you know, uh, 
I, I don't know. I mean, 10 percent's a real ugly number if they're talking yeah. their numbers, you yeah, know, yeah. because you you know that yeah, means if 25. it is 10, it's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so if they start talking 10 percent, I think you've got unprecedented uh, inflation. But, you know, you receive pushback and people change their behavior. It's already starting it's to already happen. People are already starting to change their behavior now because of gas prices. That's a big mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Uh, rent and housing, food, you know, mm-hmm. clothing everywhere. Even even like, you know, my my kids are noticing it. They're like, dang, clothes yeah. are like unbelievable, you know, as they're looking for Christmas and things yeah. like that. They're commenting on how expensive things have gotten. So when kids are paying attention, you know, you got a problem. You know? Yeah, it's funny. My wife the other day hasn't noticed a, 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 a receipt number in a long time. We picked up food at a restaurant we've been going to for a decade. She looked at the bottom number and went, what? It was, it, it was yeah, one of the so funniest things. Itself. It's just like housing. We're already seeing pushback in a lot of markets. Prices are coming down. Um, you know, we're seeing days on market go up. Some of that's seasonal, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but some of it's real that, you know, buyer fatigue, people are tired of getting beat out of houses. People are tired of overpaying, you know, those types of things. Um, so we're seeing a little bit of a tip of the scales in the housing market in certain areas. Um, you know, we're seeing pushback in terms of people's, you know, behavior. So what's the first thing that happens? Maybe they cut out uh, eating out. Maybe they cut out going to the movies. Maybe they cut out a little bit of extra weekend travel because of gas prices and stuff. Or, you know, they do those things and they cut out other bigger exp- expenditures, right. you know. Uh, but you know, and then taxes are going up. Uh, yeah. You know, not only you know income taxes, but property taxes because of the municipalities that have suffered during the pandemic and stuff. You know, there's a lot of, mm-hmm. lot of that. So, uh, you know, there there's there's some serious stuff and some headwinds out there. But again, you know, what's worse, you know, that or you know bringing the economy down. And I think, you know, if we start and that's the stagflation people are talking about, where you have high mm-hmm. uh, inflation and you have low growth because people stop spending because of the inflation. Exactly, exactly. This has been a lot of fun. I appreciate it. I agree with you. Anybody, if, again, limiting to the United States, I do believe anybody can get rich. There is a process. I, I wrote a book called 15 Conversations with Real Estate Millionaires. You are one of the chapters. Chapter yeah. eight, chapter and nine. You know, yeah. I, you know, let's qualify that. Anybody is a big a yeah. big contemplation. Everybody has the opportunity. Let's just there you go. That. Everybody. There Pretty you much go. everybody has the opportunity, but not anybody, because there are people that just whatever yeah. physical limitations, mental yeah. limitations, you're right. Just isn't gonna happen. But pretty much everybody who's capable, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, the opportunities there. Very cool. Well, Greg, how can people find you? Yeah, gregdickerson.com. That's where all my uh, information is, website, YouTube, podcast, all that. Gregdickerson.com. Very cool, buddy. Thank you very much.